भगवत गीता चैप्टर टू सांख्य योग द योग ऑफ एनालिटिकल नॉलेज श्लोका थर्टीन विद ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाई स्वामी मुकुंदानंदा इन टूडेज कॉमेंट्री स्वामी जी प्रूफ द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ री बर्थ विद इन मैक्यूलेट लॉजिक यौवनम जरा तथा प्राप्ति धीरस्तत्र न मुह्यते जस्ट एज द एम्बॉडीड सोल कंटिन्यूअसली पासिस फ्रॉम चाइल्डहुड टू यूथ टू ओल्ड एज सिमिलरली at the time of death the soul passes into another body the wise are not deluded by this if it is a fact that we are eternal then logical conclusion is that we existed even before birth and the second logical conclusion is that after death we will continue to exist that means we came from somewhere and we will go somewhere it means we had a birth before this and we will have a birth after this as well schopenhauer in the 19th century was one of the first western philosophers to study indian philosophy he was a german philosopher so he said if an asiatic were to ask me the definition of europe i would say it is that part of the globe which is suffering from the delusion that this life is our first entry into existence and there is no life after death in other words we have been created upon birth and we will finish upon death but then if we do not believe in anything before birth anything after death from a philosophic view point that becomes a very uncomfortable principle because then let us say a person is suffering from birth and he says why am i suffering how will you explain to that person why he is suffering somebody asked swami dayanand saraswati of arya samaj that what is the proof of rebirth Swami Dayanand Saraswati gave this example. He said, "Let us say a child is blind from birth, and he says, 'What did I do that I am blind?' If you say, you know, you became blind at twenty, maybe at fifteen you did something, you took out the eyes of a frog or whatever, and in response, God made you blind. But if you are blind from birth, you've done nothing." Now how do you explain if you say God wanted you to be blind? Why should God want anybody to be blind? God is all compassionate, all kind. It cannot be the results of karmas, it cannot be the result of God's wish. The only logical answer is that this is the result of the actions of your past. So without accepting the concept of past life it becomes very difficult to answer such philosophic questions and besides the perspective also changes even in indian philosophy there was charvak who believed that this life is all there is so he did not even believe in heaven and hell So he said, "Yavat jive, sukham jive, trinam kritwa, gritam pive, bhasmi bhuta sya deha sya, punara gamanam kuta." He said, "You are the body. When the body is burned upon death, you will be finished. 
So you don't need to think about any afterlife. You don't need to think of the consequences of your actions. If you get happiness by sinning, go ahead and sin. There are no consequences. Na swargo, na pavargo va naivatma paralau ki kaha. There is no heaven, there is no hell, nor is there any atma. You are a bag called this body. As long as you live, beg, borrow or steal, but be happy. This is like the Epicurean philosophy of the Greeks. Eat, drink and be merry. But if there is a previous life, there is an afterlife, then one needs to have a longer vision. Then we can't say it doesn't matter because I'll have to suffer in the next life. So that is why this concept becomes important. The fact is that this concept of rebirth, many people and traditions and cultures have believed in it ever since history. In the Song of Solomon, he states that if some people they have sound body and sound health. It is the result of good deeds done in the past life. And Josephus, a Jew, he states that in his time, it was a common belief amongst the Jews to believe in rebirth. Many of the Christians in early Christianity used to believe in rebirth. Jesus himself alluded to this principle when he said John the Baptist was Elijah the prophet come back. And Sufi saint Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi he writes I died as a stone and I became a plant. I died as a plant and I became an animal. I died as an animal and I became a human. So why should I fear death? I will die and I will become an angel. That is his take on it. And so many great poets, British poets, Tennyson, Wordsworth, they believed in reincarnation. Benjamin Franklin, thinkers in America believed in it. Here, Hare Krishna is giving a sure shot proof of reincarnation. If somebody says, can you prove it to me that there is a rebirth? Sri Krishna says it in the verse we have just read. He says, Arjun, you are repeatedly changing your body in this life itself. Kaumaram yauvanam jara. First you have a child's body, then a grown-up's body. Adult's body, old person's body. You look at your family album. And there's that two-year-old in the mother's lap. You say, Swamiji, that is me. Alright, the two-year, that little body. Then there is a five-year-old with a cricket bat. And that is me. Then there is this teenager receiving a certificate in the school with a gown. And that is me. And then there is somebody getting married. That is me. But the body is continuously changing. Which of these is you? Scientists will tell you that the body undergoes a constant process of regeneration. The cells die out. New cells take their place. This is going on constantly. That's why you eat proteins. Because your body needs them for the building blocks. So some scientists have estimated that within a space of seven years, all your body cells have changed. And the cells in your stomach, the stomach lining changes even more rapidly. Many parts of the body change very rapidly. And if you go into the chemistry, you see when you are breathing, there are metabolic reactions in all the cells and the carbon dioxide is released. That means molecules that were a part of your body, they are taken by the blood and thrown out. 
and molecules that were part of the air you are absorbing them and they becoming part of your body so what you are thinking as your body is in a state of dynamic flux within one year 98% of your body molecules have changed and yet we say i am the same person right can somebody say that let us say somebody commits a crime and the judge says you know 7 years ago you did this crime now you must be punished and the person says your honor 7 years ago i was a different person what do you mean you know my body has changed now i'm not the same person the judge will not accept that intuitively we all know that despite this continuous change taking place at every moment the i is not changing that i which is unchanging within is the soul and shri krishna says arjun you are seeing it in front of your eyes that the soul is passing through so many bodies similarly tatha dehantara prapte in the same manner when this body becomes dysfunctional when it is no longer fit for the soul to stay when there is too much of pain disease misery suffering in this body the soul will reject this body and move on so that is the process of rebirth or reincarnation proved by shri krishna the nyaya darshan gives another proof the nyaya darshan says tanya bhilashat when a little child is born how can the mother teach the child how to drink milk the child cannot understand it does not know language how is the mother to train that little baby how to drink milk a practical problem we've not thought about it we take it for granted so the vedanta darshan says the fact is the child has drunk the mother's milk in endless past lifetimes so the moment the mother puts the breast into the child's mouth the child immediately remembers and starts suckling the nyay darshan gives a third proof for reincarnation the nyay darshan says jatasya harsh shok bhay sampratipatah it states that look at a little baby without reason it becomes fearful without reason it starts laughing without reason it becomes miserable what is going on it says this child is remembering its past life that is why this is happening Firstly death is a painful experience for the soul its memory gets erased birth is an even more painful experience the memory is further erased the little residue that is still remembered this life's impressions come so strong that those are totally erased so that is god's system of making us forget because if we remember past lives there will be tremendous confusion She was my wife how did she become his wife this was my property how did it become his property everybody would start fighting with each other so god said my dear children whatever you did in your past lives it will remain as your karmas i will remember it i will keep account of it and at the proper time i will give the benefits but you will not remember otherwise imagine how much tension you will have we people have tension from the things of one life this fellow did this this fellow said that now imagine if we can remember things of endless lifetimes what will happen so nevertheless even though we don't remember philosophically and logically and scientifically through all these arguments and illustrations we can reach a conclusion that there is in fact rebirth and we the soul do not die upon death we are 
इटर्नल Thank you for being a part of the Gita Gyan Yagya which is our humble attempt to spread the divine knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. Please subscribe to our channel 